Okay, I want to say hello everybody and welcome to this uh, evening talk video here, okay? Um, in this video I just want to talk about um, a very deep topic and this is not a topic that um, I talk about a lot. I, is, I, I have made videos in the past, deep, I, I say philosophical, I mean really deep topics, you know, for the mind, um, talking about the universe, like the creation of everything, and you know, it involves whatever you know, um, concepts. Di people have different concepts of like science and then religion and stuff. And I've expressed before that I personally, myself, am not religious, I don't have a religion, but um, I wouldn't call myself atheist, I don't know what to call myself, I'm just someone who doesn't know any, anything about anything. I can't, I can't be sure of my own thoughts. Whatever I think I know, I could be wrong. Right, that's how it is. So, right. So, I'm open to any possibilities because I know not enough of any other possibilities um, other than the possibilities that other human beings put forth. Uh -huh. So, um, let me just, uh, so, you know, I never make many videos talking about religion and God and spiritual, whatever, in the afterlife, never. Because for the most part, I've got nothing to really say about it, I just don't know. But, there are a couple of things that I would like to say okay about this okay that are deep and I'm going to try and make this video fairly straightforward because some of these videos could go on for hours I I could talk for hours about things that well just going into it or whatever's beyond the quantum physics and whatever it's all unknown to us and, you know we can get very philosophical and go into all different topics I mean this stuff's really interesting Mm, to ponder, but you're just pondering the universe of the mind, ultimately. You know, um, regardless of what's bigger, the actual universe or your mind <laughs> universe, you'll be pondering that for a long time. Yeah, in your mind. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, I want to talk about this, okay? <clears throat> People talk about God. And people say that some religious people, let's say certain Christians, okay, talk about this in videos online. And they talk about, I've heard it over and over again, they, hear, they talk about how, um, look how perfect. I'm talking various people out there that are religious, they believe that you see how perfect everything is in the world, in the universe, how it's all been designed obviously and it's just obvious because you know um, obviously someone someone made your mobile phone okay there had to be a designer to there had to be a designer to make a mobile phone right it's just common sense right it, it didn't just come out of nowhere and they use the same argument for um, <clears throat> God and the world and the universe they say look how perfect everything is and it makes sense right, when they say that, okay, it's a perfect system, we have a perfect system of, you know, that works for us, perfect for us, um, for all life on the planet, Earth, Earth, for example, to be thriving the way it does, you know, the, for the seasons to change the way they do, for, you know, all of it, gravity, oxygen, food and water, all the, the basic thing, the basic perfect temperature for us to live, you know, everything's um, d designed right, you've got the moon going around the earth, and then you've got people, and look at how a tree is, a tree is, they use the word design, they say look at the tree, it's designed perfectly, the roots are going into the ground, the leaves are growing, um, you know, a, bir a bird has wings, it's been designed, otherwise how could it fly like that, everything would be random. But the thing is, to me, 
why I have a problem with that, why I have a problem with saying it's designed, is <coughs> I don't have a <coughs> definite. I don't have a definite um, knowing, you know, and, uh, of that being true or not. Like if something was, if if there was a desi designer or not behind everything. Okay, um, I don't know for sure. You know, if 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 or not things were designed, like everything. But my point, my problem, my thing I want to say, my thing is this: I feel we have this is a very uh, this is one good way I can say this people have the eyes for designing um, you know like uh, we paint we, we it's, it's again it's the um, expression from our perception yeah, put, so projection projection from our um, perception and then we, per we perceive and project what we perceive to be real the same way as you know they make sci-fi movies about all kinds of aliens on different planets and every one of them has got like a head arms legs you know for example and that's based off of what we imagine on earth some big furry um, alien or some beastly looking lizard type alien that represents something we've seen on earth you know it's like sometimes occasionally they'll come up with something new and different but everything we project just comes from what we know around us the same way as language and the way people talk from generation to generation they talk based on what they've seen from the world around them cultures different generations across different cultures across the world so let me go back to what I'm saying okay we have the eyes for design so we see we have a body or we see animals around us or birds with wings we see a tree and we know, okay, that's a tree and fruits growing on the tree. And then we see something random like a, a mountain or some high, big pieces of rock and cliffs, which are giant sized to us. Do we say we're big? We are small or we do, do we say that's big? But still, we look at these randomly shaped jagged rocks and stuff and, we, and we're still going to turn around and say that's been designed too, you know. Everything's been designed. I look at... Look at the ingredients of water, the O2 and whatever. That's there's got to have been design there. We may not we may not know the purpose, but there's a design to everything. And gravity, look how that works. And um, you know, look, um, a dog has four legs and a tail and a head. And we look at the workings of everything, and we say, this is here it's perfect we look at things that are perfect or imperfect and we just say we see what is and we say oh this is has been designed <laughs> you know it's like some um, it's like can you imagine the opposite can you imagine something that would not have been designed so you would turn around and say no exactly because every single thing was created by our God now that could be true I'm not saying that that's not true. How do I know? Okay, but what I'm saying is the point is I'm I'm speaking. If you can get what I'm saying from a human perspective, the problem is human beings do not have the mind to be able to interpret. Even if you were to read a religious book, that's how I said, like a Bible or something, you don't have the mind of God at all to actually interpret to actually interpret that. You don't have the brain power, the mind understanding to understand. Why? Because even if you can read it, until you have the absolute true understanding, the depths of the origin of the actual mind of God, then you are not going to be able to understand that. So you'd be very ignorant in my eyes. I think, in my opinion, you'd be very ignorant to just say, yeah, I understand that, I know what God means, yeah, I just follow that, and you know, yeah... And um, and then look at the board and say, yeah, that was designed. Like just speaking from your own eyes, because you know, you know, you know what a tree looks like. Now. If like you know, if you didn't know, if, if you just saw something growing, you know, like you 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 never knew the order to it. If you never understood a tree that 
the roots are there, they grow fruits, they grow leaves, and you know, if you never knew that, it, it, the less like it's like the more you know, the more the human being knows about the world, the more he says that is more likely to say that it's, it's been designed because he's a creative thinker and he like he knows what works for him or her. I'm saying a human being knows the workings of some of what he sees around him as workings. But what, what I'm trying to say is, we see the world around us and all of its workings, as in how things are working, you know, the elements, the, the, the apples growing on the trees and whatever, the birds got wings, and we see it, and people say, well, it can't be just random because those things are perfect. And I do agree, they're pretty amazingly organised, if I, without putting the term like someone's organised it, I just mean they are very they've come together one way but what I'm trying to say is you know you drop um, you pour water into a cup or, or water falls into somewhere water falls on the floor or water falls into a hole or it could be sand or or you drop you drop a bunch of things on the floor how are they gonna how are they gonna end up that's the best example if you did randomly just drop a few things on the floor where however they fall and however they end up in whatever positions that's where they're going to be right and so where's the intelligence behind that even but it had to be right it had to be a certain way but then someone would turn around and say oh no don't be silly things couldn't just be that way because there had to be intelligence behind it to make it so and what I'm trying to say is the workings, okay, like we understand like the, the workings of the body, we understand we feel pain in the skin, we, we um, you know, you understand certain things, temperature, so, uh, uh, five senses, five senses, okay, we absorb the world around us, from five senses, we even talk about life, even like life, I said, you know, you know? Um, and we think, oh, that's life, <clears throat> but, you know, um, like if you were looking for life out in the universe, in space, you know, what would you find? You may not find some, you know, the space version of Big Bigfoot, which basically looks like a prehistoric man slash monkey. You know, you, know you, you may find just a blob of jelly or some kind of other matter in space. You don't know what it is. It may not have to be something that, you know, um, reproduces, you know, um, Reproduces or eats or drinks or needs an energy source or lives or dies or breathes air, you know, you know it's just a di different kind of organisation of energy is the only way I can express it, matter and energy, you know, so whatever that is. We are just one form of material as such, energy and matter, and it all comes together, then you go to the massive scale, which is the cells themselves and atoms that make you. And they come together and make you know the, the, well, the body what, to what it is a system but we're a system and part of a system in the universe it's like what I'm trying to say is people talk about the mind and having a mind or a spirit inside the body <coughs> there's a few more things I want to cover just quickly and they say like um, <coughs> excuse me um, people say that uh, we have a mind and a body, but other scientists and you know you could get go on a biological way of saying things to say it, maybe there's no no mind and no spirit, and it's just a muscle, literally a re, um, a, a brain a brain is just um, causing the illusion of that thought exists that you you have an inner being, a mind and a soul, a spirit. It's actually just this complex organism, this brain, this um, organ. But, um, you know, people bring together all these ideas and they say, no, no, don't you think it's a miracle that you're actually alive, that things are actually working now, that you can breathe? Of course I do. I think it's amazing, because I have a human mind and an imagination, but I do think it's amazing how, in some way that I'm here, you know, of course I have this life. It's amazing the, the way things just actually work and the body can heal and all the rest of it heal itself and a lot of things and grow you know and you can be alive and the way everything even the way that things are the sun shining in the sky it's all amazing you can say wow you know but because we're human beings we have this feeling of rock of rock or a stone may not necessarily have that feeling or that um, 
feeling of wow, you know, and um, and reason behind things. It doesn't, it doesn't have a mind at all, right? But if a rock did, if a rock could do that, maybe a rock would also believe that it had a spirit. So if it, if it could think and work like a brain or something, if a, if a rock had a pair of eyes and it was able to think like a brain, it, would, it might turn around and it might say, yeah, I have a spirit in me and a mind in me. But it doesn't know it's really just a piece of rock um, being worn down by the waters of time. But what I'm trying to say is, like, you know, I'm not saying that none of this could be true, like, is it, you know, God who created everything. But I'm saying the only the only type of design that we know is what we see around us. We see that things, and things are the way they are, I know, an, an apple is literally growing from the branches, you know, on the tree with the leaves, and, yeah, and you say, isn't that amazing? And it really is. But only because you know we eat apples or we see that as that's that part this part of that part and we're very artistic and we look at how things are and we say oh, that's being created and we say we see things as not random we put it another way we see things as not being a random thing you see we see and it's very hard how can i how can i sit here and tell you that we are random, like not only random chance for being created like this, I'm saying actually a random organisation of things across every individual within a species, every human being has two arms and two legs, but usually right, birds have wings, so I, how can I say that's a random thing, it should be like one or two right, the fact that we have a whole species and stuff, but then again you see the number matters and the number doesn't matter, but what I'm trying to say is that, you know, we see creation because we see the use in things and how things are. But it's like, what I'll say is, you know, I'm taking simple examples like I'm trying to compare it, it's like it's weird, but grass growing, let's say grass growing, you know, from the, from the ground, lots of, lots of blades of grass, you know, so... You know, it's just, it is what it is, you know, it is what it is, you know, um, you can talk about why God made the mountains so tall, or made us so small, whereas if you were standing to like a fat part of a mountain, let's say a wall, you say, oh why is it so flat, or why does it go so far, you see, we could look at things from different directions, different um, perspectives, you know? but, um, what I'm trying to say is the whole, everything about the human mind is of itself, for the most part. So our, I, our contemplation and comprehension, so comprehension, understanding of anything, is only a human understanding. And then we're on God's level. And um, your emotion, your happiness, your sadness, here's another thing. <laughs> here's, now, yeah, here's another thing. People say that they have an innate understanding about that. Like um, emotion, like love and love and you know emotional. Um, they call it spiritual, deep, like within that like, human being, a na natural thing. Like human beings know what love is and desire and uh, certain things, you know. But I don't know, you know. It's like, what does it mean? Have they studied that enough? I wouldn't say it's something deeper. Oh, God's given you that. Because although we don't understand, it's what I'm trying to say. It's the mind and the brain and the mind, you know. Actually, there's a bunch of thoughts. Like if you if you fell in love with someone, there's a bunch of reasons why. Now, you know what needs do you have? You know what I mean? I'm not going to go into detail, but you know what I mean. And then yeah, certain things are. Um, it's like Richard Dawkins, the scientist, was saying. I don't want to say atheist. I want to say the scientist who said that there could be a possibility of God. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, uh, Richard Dawkins, I, I like the guy, but I'm saying Richard Dawkins, okay? Well, you know, he even said, he said, like, you know, he feels um, a strange uh, feeling whenever he hears a certain piece of music or he sees something beautiful or, you know, he gets a feeling too. You might see someone you, someone you think is very beautiful or a piece of art you really like or stars in the sky or listening to certain music. There's certain things we can't explain. But I believe underneath it, and he believes it too, there is a scientific thing, there is an actual 
reason why you connect with certain things colors patterns or the arrangements of things the arrangement of how a beautiful woman's looks her face or her clothes or whatever it is anything it could be it, or the way a certain piece of music and the way the notes play there's certain things which relate to the way you know you relate to without being aware but you just know it as the power of love or the power of emotion or something but there's an actual thing there that makes you feel comfortable that's related to connected to actual other things like deep down bit by bit there and such so they're like created they're um, connected to you know times where you've been like feeling safe or in danger there's practicality to it we've not the logic is that the, the knowledge as such has gone to your whole being, your mind and your body, and it's like you just literally are it. So it's, it's very hard for me to like put that into words and explain uh, that, of course. But I'm saying it's all of the human mind, you know what I'm trying to say, the human mind. So the human mind basically um, can't, you know, know anything beyond what itself knows and sees already, and it's regurgitating or re um, retelling itself what it already knows, basically, and then saying, because of this truth that I see before me, it's been created by something else. So what they're doing is they're painting God in their image. You know, they say God painted or created people in their image in his image they're create they're making god in their in their human image they're saying that he's got to be a creator like because they are the creators that's what it is. they see things in a creative way they say this has been created you see now designed sorry designed because they are the designer they know they think they know everything about design but you know it's and uh, it's it's fascinating, it really is, because you know, they don't know exactly what they're talking about. Now, there's two more points I'm going to just cover really quickly. Okay, I don't know if you've, I've covered this well enough in this video so far to the point, but there's two other things I want to say. Okay, so before we get onto those two things, I'll just finish up by saying, um, you know, there's no place in these people's minds. There's no place for saying anything is random so they are saying which is fair enough but I'm just saying like you know that means everything has been created and I'm not going to argue what the purpose of everything it is of every grain of sand or why a stone has been created a certain shape or why a fungus grows on the tree and uh, God has the scientific true scientific answer for I'm not I'm not saying because it's up it's up to God why he did that you know and it's, it's not for me exactly uh, to, to follow exactly that what I'm trying to say here is like, my point is though, if, and I know it's a big if, and you may say it's in the realms of make-believe, if you're a religious person maybe you'd say that, but I'm just saying, okay, if everything, if there was a randomness, you know, there's things, like human beings see the organ, the organisation of things, and they say it's the design, they use the word design, it's been designed this way, because look how it's working. Look at the way that thing's moving, and we see it like that's the top, that's the bottom. You know, that's that's the back, that's the front. We see things. They're the legs, and uh, it's it's. Uh, oh, the dog's dancing. No, the dog's just moving a certain way because it feels comfortable. You know, um, we reinterpret things a certain way, and we we paint the world to be that way. And we say, look, it's doing it in front of your eyes. There, that's the way it is. You know. Um, why is it always the top and the bottom of the earth? It's just a sphere, it's a ball. But you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, you know, um, did, did God create or design? Even if he did, did he design it as you see it? Ah, he might have designed it a different way. There's something you're not seeing. You're, you're seeing something from another angle. And you're saying, no, I know everything about that tree. Trees grow fruit because you're a human and you eat the apples and you like the taste but was that the actual thing maybe maybe he did that he put them on on the earth for you or maybe not and where's the top and you said that's the top there because the leaves are there because we know that gravity holds us down standing to the ground and the apples fall down 
But if you're in another angle in space, or it'd be a different way. And um, is it more about this or that? You know, it's like different part. We're looking at things. I'm just using bad examples here, I know, but there's many things about nature itself and everything around us. We don't know the actual design of how it was meant to be and what it was meant to be. You're trying to look at a painting and judge the mind of a person. We didn't ever even meet the artist to even know as such, you know, but it's like to ask the artist. You look at something, you know, um, why does nobody come to this shop? Oh, maybe because nobody likes the stuff they sell there. It's bad. So you're, you're painting things up because that's what it's got to be and it has to be. And that's what you've known and you're replaying what you've told yourself over and over about other past experiences. And you say that's what God's designed. It's right here. And, the, you know, so they're basing things off of their designer eyes. And this is the problem there. You know, God had to have been the designer because he, the creator, because he designed everything in the way that I see with my eyes to understand what design means. You understand what I mean? Like, we're human beings, you're painting a human out, out image. So, you know, yeah, what, what's here is here. There's no BS. We've got food, we've got air, we've got everything. Maybe that's all absolutely what it is. Maybe he did create everything. But then there's other aspects and there's so many things when it comes to religion as well, a lot of things that you'd have to seek as well. What I'm saying is creation of everything. We've got our five uh, senses, we've got our own understanding of morality and everything, and our understanding of what understanding even means. There's no way we'll be on the right level to actually purely, justly and honestly understand, from my point of view, what uh, a God actually would mean. In speaking now, um, there's a few things. Uh, so a couple, I said a couple of things I wanted to say before we finish up here. A couple of things, okay. So um, I've forgotten one of them now. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. But um, you know, um, whatever it is, <laughs> obviously. And I want to say another thing here, okay. Um, some bit, there's one thing in the Bible, I believe, in the in the Bible, when they're talking about um, if a man was. It, um, should a man, a man or a person, a man basically shouldn't look at an, at a woman with lust. Okay? Shouldn't look at a woman with lust. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a sin, right? Now, I don't know what that means. That a lust is a desire to, you know, have sexual intercourse with her, right? Now, hold on for a second. So, men and women are supposed to go together. They're supposed to go together. They're supposed to. Uh, um, reproduce, you know, have have children or whatever, um, be fruitful on the earth. That's what sort of was told to uh, um, you know Adam and Eve, wasn't it, or something like that? Please excuse me, if I'm getting my words mixed up again. But you know, but you know, you're supposed to be fruitful. You're supposed to have a uh, you know have kids. Now, I hear many preachers preaching this over and over. I may bring this up again in another video, just briefly, but. These preachers bring this stuff up over and over, saying that there's this quote, there's this thing in the Bible where it, the, God says you're not supposed to uh, look at a woman with lust because it's sin, as in a desire to have sexual intercourse with her. So you're attracted to them. Or what's the difference between attraction and um, lust? To be admiring her beauty, say the face body as well, I mean, you know, it's all part, basically everything about her, right, it could be the way she looks, um, obviously the way she looks, right, and whether it's the clothes she's wearing or not, but her face, her body, and then, uh, um, even the way she is in her personality, but you're not allowed to look at them, uh, in that way and see them and have, have a desire, a lust. Now, I understand you get perverts and rapists and things, and I also understand if there, if it's said that a man should not lust over another woman other than his wife or the one that he's chosen to be with and they're loyal to one another, you know, each other uh, and a man and his wife, you know, if, if a man lusts over another woman, I understand that, you're not supposed to do that. But for a man not, a man who has no partner, who doesn't have a partner yet, how is that? I don't understand that. So if anyone's out there, if anyone's a Christian, could you just explain that? What 
I want to say what the hell or what the heck that's supposed to mean when are these people getting it wrong these people when they say that um, you know God says you shouldn't lust over a, wo over a woman like any woman uh, but have a desire to be because yeah you may admire her and I think she's a beautiful person for her personality and the beauty but I think to be attracted and then the sexual stuff as well that, that comes naturally doesn't it I'm not saying you're a pervert like running after anyone just going to rape them but I'm saying you, you, know, you naturally do get attracted men and women are attracted to one another and there's, a, there's a little bit of that there you're not going to you're not going to go and put your hands all over them I'm just saying you know you that the sexual part is part of the attraction you know just don't just looking at them you know you, they're attractive they're pretty beautiful whatever you get attracted uh, a woman finds a man handsome a man, um, a man finds a woman beautiful same thing right they're attracted and um, it, it leads one thing to the next if they wasn't attracted to one another then they wouldn't be it shouldn't be just a, in my mind just a job where they just come together for no reason it's part of the whole thing about what love is you know an attract start of attraction because you don't know someone right in the very beginning but it's, you've got to have this base attraction there haven't you to be actually want to be with them because you're not a homosexual let's say per se but so if a man and woman supposed to want to go together so what I'm trying to basically say is you've got you know if um if God's saying that if God said if he's supposed to have said that um, a man is not supposed to lust over another woman other than his wife, you know, if it ever any desires or attractions towards her, like sexual, sexual, or ever loving attractions, that makes sense. But if you're, but if you're trying to say that any man um, should not have any attraction over um, attraction, whatever, uh, to any woman like that, you know, be lusting over them uh, before uh, getting together with that person, and he's not even married or anything, has no part. Then what are you talking? How the how can people I'm trying to keep this clean here, language-wise? How can people? How could we repopulate? How could we populate the earth? How could we literally? How could people genuinely want to be together? You know, they'd be they'd be lying because don't forget that's another of the ten commandments. Don't forget thou shalt not lie. So you're lying in your heart, right? They talk a lot about the heart, right? Things like I've heard it. They say um, if a man or if someone should hate another person, if a man hates. If someone hates someone, okay, then it means they've committed murder in their heart, right? So, so it's the same thing. You should not lie to people. You shouldn't lie in your heart and try and deceive, right? So deceive yourself. So they wouldn't just go with um, it's like unjust laws and all that stuff. So they, they wouldn't go uh, go with someone who they didn't really love or have an attraction for. They've got to be together. Right? So they come together naturally. It's a natural thing. And then they uh, populate the earth and all that and all the rest of it, you know. Uh, so that's what makes sense to me. So by saying it that way, that, that's right. But by, but by saying uh, you can't have any uh, attraction to anyone, that doesn't make any sense to me. So people have said things different ways. I don't know if anybody out there is logical could explain that to me. I don't know um, from your point of view. But as I say, I, I'm not religious as such. Uh, this is this is the final point I want to say again, reiterating my final big point here. Okay, that I'm humble, that I, I, humble and honest as a human that. I would not be able to fa even face God if God was to come down there in front of me. I wouldn't be able to face God right here and say to him, him or her, it's all of that. I literally know what you're saying, know that you exist right here, and know it. Even if you're telling me that yes, I'm right to believe it because I can see it. And I think I would be very ignorant to just believe that uh, you know. I know exactly what I'm seeing or experiencing only through my five senses or illusions of whatever possible illusions of whatever else could be like spiritual communication um, through my five senses to actually know or to think I know that what I'm seeing is real and believe it and trust I would be actually I would humble myself into uh, before the God that I'm seeing hearing or in my mind even without seeing I, I'd say look you know as always I'm a simple human being, I don't know, I can't be that cocky ego, I, I can't be that um, confident in myself that I know, and to be a just, honest, genuine human being, to be tr truly true and honourable to the God that possibly created us, to show that, I would actually say that, I would say I can't say that I believe what I'm seeing more you know 
whether it's the my ideas of what design is or, or design is all around me or whatever and all that, whether it's um, anything, my experience, my whole experience in this life, experiencing a religious text right in front of me, the very first written one, proof there, or another human being, um, someone that walked with the ancient Jesus or whoever, you know. I, I would not be able to say to God himself that I, I'm going to trust any of this experience around me now as being true. I could literally be in an illusion state of mind or just less aware. I am less aware than the all-knowing God, that's what I'd say. And that there to me is the ultimate true honourable way of truly honouring the, at least the possible from a simple human positive life perspective I value nature I'm very grateful for the life and everything you know but it's like that's been, that would be my true way of um, showing any honour to the possibility of you know him existing so a kind of like deep belief if you'd call it but I'm not going to I wouldn't say that I just believe what I see and you know and um, uh design all around me tells me that you designed it because what the hell do I know about design I see a bird with two wings I know I've got two lungs but at the end of the day what do I know really about how that was designed what was designed what this and that I don't know the whole full story so someone would turn around now and say well I'm just talking crap a lot of people would turn around and say look man I'm the kind of person that sees all the evidence in front of him sees a gun covered in blood and would still reject the idea of murder or suicide you know, no I'm not saying that I, I'm just saying that I literally know less so I would not be able to look around me and see all of this and say what I see is and God designed this and that's the way it's supposed to be and be absolutely sure that my mind is able to come to contemplate even if God was to come down in front of me and tell me now you're right to believe in me, what you've read there, what you've been told is true, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I still, I would still have to say, look, I don't know if my senses are absolutely true. And me to just say, okay, I get you now, would be a total lie. Even to God, I'd be like an absolute liar because I would not know and I'd be to lying to myself, foolish. And um, to just go along with it, go along with what he says, would it still be unjust. It's like police who follow rules and stuff but don't really know the law inside out, where they follow anything that the, 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 you know what I mean? Whoever's like in charge tells you what to do, but they don't look at the, the fine print, what it's all about, you know? That would be that's very unjust, you know? You know? Um, yeah. They look, at, they look at people in positions of power, but they don't understand that, you know? And they do that. So anyway, all I'm just—that's all I'm saying. Okay, so um, there's some things there, but that thing about lust and stuff—that's that's a thing there, because I think they're using it in such a way, like you know, it's just absolutely wrong. No. I, 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 in my opinion, I'm saying you walk you're walking down the street. I'm saying some of these people—they're not expressing it right. I think you know, if, if a man or if a male. Um, feels any kind of attraction to a female that's very normal and that's how you also later when you know populate the earth as well but before he gets married or before he knows the person but if they're talking about like lust in terms of like once you, after you've married and you lust after somebody else I understand that but people are wording this thing wrong I think as well I'm gonna stop this one here let me know what you think okay guys thank you for watching tell me what you think and let me know your ideas thank you